So, welcome to another meeting of the Station Hill Intermedia Lab here at Green Kill in our green room. And I'd like to thank my uh, co-host, Michael Ruby. My name is Sam Truitt. And we're here for A Peripheries which is being made now by Kay Prevalet and Peter Blum. Before they come on, I wanted to read something that I found following the Intermedia Lab copyrighted algorithm and this is from an essay that was published, written by Susan Stewart, and found its way into the Chicago Review, appeared in uh, their winter 2003-2004 edition, and it's entitled, On the Art of the Future. And the passage that I'm gonna read comes towards its conclusion and since this was written, what, 20 years ago almost, we're here where it was pointing. How is art making also productively counter to contingent nature? That is what is given or circumstantial and hence bound up with decisions about technology such as here, such as here. For example, the conditions necessary for the practice of art by women who have only been, have only been available by means of technological interventions in our own biological destiny of the kind of artists like Arkawa and Madeline Ginz now imagine as antidote to death itself to which Susan Stewart affixed this note, footnote. We do not have to be Lamarckian, th that is, the belief an organism can pass to its offspring, physical characteristics, etc., forerunner to Darwin, to hold to something like an idea of somatic adaption. And soma, in this case, not the uh, intoxicant, but for, to derived from the Greek word somatikos, or of the body, or learning of the kind Gregory Bateson explored in his essay, The Role of Somatic Change in Evolution, and to think that the kind of flexibility and reversibility aesthetic experience affords could have far-reaching consequences for human life. Bateson contends that, quote, inheritance of acquired characteristics would be lethal to the evolutionary system because it would be fixed. Fix the values of these variables all around the circuits. The organism of species would, however, benefit in survival terms by geotypic change, which would stimulate Lamarckian inheritance, i.e., would bring about the adaptive component of somatic homeostasis without involving the whole homeostatic circuit. Such a denotypic change would confer a bonus of somantic, somatic flexibility and would therefore have marked survival value.
The language of the following performance has been drawn forth through the remaining grasses, pokeberry bushes, feverfew, snake root, ash, oak, maple, and plantain of the land upon which I reside, which had been hunting ground for the Rekwasa Geek, they of the Wappinger peoples, who have lived in these parts for 3,000 years before encountering Henry Hudson and his murderous band of settlers. At this moment, we are standing in this intersection of time and space, on the unceded lands of the Lene Leape and Ramapo peoples. And so I offer these incantations and stories to like smoke blend with the many stories, incantations, and movements of language already addressing trauma and the opening of wounds in recognition of the privilege and in reverence to the trauma, to participate in the breaking down of the legacies of oppressive systems by moving syntax within the grammar of minds, to recompose notions and defy ownership, periods, and naming through command or coherence. It is in this spirit that we offer this performance a peripheries. Thank you for joining us here tonight in the circle, wherever you may be sitting on that couch or in that chair, on that floor. And the invitation now is to take a moment to drop down into your body with your mind dropping down into your body. This is an invitation into a very safe space. It's an invitation to circumnavigate the periphery of a very beautiful and amazing place that you love more than anywhere. And so the safety of this periphery is your own, imagining now yourself. Where you are sitting in this place, maybe it's a landscape like a beach or a home, an apartment even, your own room. And if you could just take a moment to imagine that around wherever it is that you are now, there is a kind of border, but not really a border. It's a periphery, the way that you might imagine, for example, a backyard to be surrounded by a fence. Or a beach to be not surrounded by anything in particular, except the particulars of that landscape wherever you are now is the right place to be. And the invitation here is just one to begin circumnavigating the periphery by moving yourself into what is on the outside of where you had been now sitting in that chair walking. Walking slowly, just noticing yourself. Perhaps as you're walking, touching whatever it is that you are walking by, just allowing yourself to notice and create a space around where you are now so that you become aware that you are right now surrounded by space. You're surrounded by space and you are in time. And you can continue just even circumnavigating that periphery in your mind as you listen to the language as an offering into this space and into this time. And wherever you are now, it is a beautiful and it is a safe place to be. Inviting now the periphery into your center, into where you are now in your body breathing. Dropping down into breath, into who you are in this moment here.
to practice border blur. From this place in your body now, closing your eyes and seeing the location of something or someone you have lost, including yourself, remove all nouns from the vision. Dark, hollow, wooden, like buried, float above that sentence. Now open your eyes and look in front of you at what is actually there here. Remove all nouns from your vision. Be in the space of what is left behind, green edge blur lines walking. Blue roundness, perpendicular stacks aside, slanted backward blows, still moves song bowls, the poet said. Here, there is where you will find he, she, they, you, it, or something else floating into the landscape you hadn't been looking for. Sign, lungful, stardust, wrist, warm wood drip, green layers, green, green, yellow, green blowing. People particular present as cellulars, now stars exploding. Curve and tilts fall, not confused, inability, thought edge eternally. One ends, another begins. Oh, love of me. Oh, confusion, edge, body, night, action, body, collapse, backward, stopping. Suckling universal curves, chaos, tender, breaking. Pre breaking, love magnetic, potential vision, still door, way, wall, turn a slant, stasis, motion, potential, plot, wobbles, time, moves, mind signals, animals, motion, still, fixed, standing, nothing, eruption, foreshadowed. Space pulled in time, intimacy, pen to thought, gravity, body, cellular, shifts, self-destruct, powerless, abuse, absolute, heal me now. Heal you now, swift, losing electric. Moving electric pot, thickening. Electric, room, light, swift, covert, quiet. Motion, poised, blowing, cusp, plot, motion, touching, cusp, almost but not yet quite, not yet meaning. Calm, I storm, mind quiet racing, nothing denouement, plot drop falling almost over. Ritual, quiet, healing breath now red. Candle white, paper and pen. Metal, tin and matches set up quiet space, say, circle, protect me and protect others from the energies I plan to release. Circle, protect me and protect others from the energies I plan to release. Protect me and protect others from the circle I plan to release. Circle, protect me and protect others. Circle, I plan to release. Circle and protect from the energies I plan to release. Circle, protect and protect others from the energies I plan to release. Chant, shout, scream sounds, rage into red candle burns. Rage into red candle burns. Bright, hotter, force anger fuels. Now fire papers tin into burnout. Comfortably, calm against release. Circle energy sinking it back into the earth. Thank elements watching over me, higher power. Thank elements watching over me. Let candles burn completely out, burn completely out of the place where you are tuning, where you are tuning in. Burning out of the place where you are tuning in. 
of speech and physical harm, of violence and aggression, a tuning in, consciously or unconsciously holding as memory in your body, releasing breath, yaw. hear me among the angels hierarchies even if one of them pressed me suddenly against his heart Rilke as if moving in this peripheral space were easy There is no expression of mourning that can ever completely overcome the deep attachment to what has been lost. Mourning is an ongoing process of trying over and over again to make language make sense of a world that will never again feel complete. This just means that without you, I am not complete. I put language into slots of rhythm and I want to make the world complete. I put language into slots of rhythm and I want to make the world complete. If the worlds just fall right into a rhythm, will I feel again complete? Pre-breakage, I break into the moment from them to language into slots of rhythm. If the worlds fall just right into a rhythm, will I feel again complete? I want her back, I want him back. I want the spotted owl and the brown bear back. I want the cape lion and I want the Caribbean monk seal, the giant sloth and the blue buck, I want them back. I want them back, I want them back, I want them back. If I move language into slots of rhythm, will they come back? Will he come back, will she come back, will they come back? Will they all come back? If I put language into the spell of rhythm, can I conjure something into this space? If I put language into the spell of rhythm, can I conjure something into this space? Passenger pigeons, animals in zoos, come back. What is gone but here now is real, this putting language into rhythms, into slots, this conjuring or remaking of a breathing, empty in this space and time that will never come again, moment lost, moving, come again, come again, pollinator bees and seeds sowing migratory birds gone, come again, come again. If I put language into rhythmic slots, can I conjure, can I conjure? If I put language into rhythmic slots, can I conjure, can I conjure? To the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, to the elements, to the air, to the fire, to the earth, to the ether, to the water. Da 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 like a bird on a stone, like a fish in a fish's bones, like a snake on a hook, like a whale from some classic book, like an ant on the grass, like a mantis praying with trash. I'll remember all the bees when you're gone, when you're gone. I'll remember all the bees when you're gone. I have 
sunk all my vessels in your sea, in your sea. I have tried through it all to be free, to be free. Tear every line from this song. I swear I met a man playing dice who asked me for advice. I said, remember the future. It hasn't happened yet. But the song knows we're just a slug on a tree, just a slug on a tree, just a rose on a knee and a pound of blasphemy. Like a dog crying wolf near a pond, crying ready to hear near a rock, like a fish in a fish's bones. I have tried, or a bone in a song from a playlist long gone. I have tried, 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 I have tried through it all, 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 through it all. I have tried, 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 tried to be free. It was a mountain, my love. If all alone I had known it was a mountain, my love, would I go, would I go, would I go, would I go through? If in spite of it all I had known you were a flame, my love, my love, my love, would I burn, would I burn through? If in the midst I had known you were an arrow, my love, my love, my love, would I lie down, would I lay down? If through the opening I had known it was a swallowing, would I sail, would I sail, would I sail, would I sail around? If over my dead body I knew spirits passed not gently, would I hold tightly, would I hold tightly, would I hold tightly, would I hold on? If to you I swing softly, then to you I make out. Would you, to you, come towards, and would you let me in to your center, to your hearth, to your warmth, your enclosure, or bury me neath the weeping willow, and will you weep for me? Or bury me neath the weeping willow, and will you weep for me? decided lovingly to be the one to share. She lies alone where the sun won't shine. She lies alone in the vine. One a man and two a moon, three a dove and four a loon, five a sassafras and six a stick to rub the fire of might, a stick to rub the fire of night. One a man and two a moon, three a dove and four a loon, five a sassafras and six a stick to rub the fire of night, a stick to rub the fire of night. We're not done rhyming yet, Peter. <laughs> to she while swimming, did she with glee 
circle around and around the turtles and around the tree, swimming around and around the turtles in the tree, while the dog watched circumnavigatingly. It wasn't a brimstone and it wasn't a sack. It wasn't a trickle and it wasn't a slap. Of course I made it known, my love, that power isn't free. It only comes around when there is less of me. It only comes around when there is less of me. I made it known, my love, that power isn't free. It only comes around. It only comes around. It only comes around when there is less of me. I felt it in the tree, my son. I felt it in the brine. I felt it in the sticky goo of cosmic serpentine. The serpentine brought me home to it, but I hadn't missed a beat. It wasn't then and it wasn't now. It wasn't the milking of a lonely cow or the boy who led me far astray, astray to the wandering, astray to the night. It wasn't a cowbell and it wasn't a fight. It wasn't a watchman nor was it delight that brought me back to you, to you, that brought me back to you. It's only a power in the one, two, three. It's only a power in the love of me. I loved a moon song. You loved it back. Love to the loon and love to the brink. If brink was a rhyme, then I'd bid it back. But not until I learned to love. Not until I learned to love. Not until I learned to love down deep. Not until I loved. Not until I spoke so loudly that love was kind, that love was kind, that love was kind. Not until I spoke so loudly that love is mine and love is all. Not until I spoke so loudly that you will love again, you. 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 You, not like Broadway used to be in November, slowed, slogged, and slushy. But today I am 10 box to go and it's already 10 a.m. The crowd of people on the sidewalk keeps getting thicker and I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I know you in the jam again are gleefully finding a plastic soldier, your stuck interior, jammed behind the sofa. Loudly you are declaring it found because it was lost for such a long time. I'm still plodding along because right now I can't do anything else except marvel how a virus can bring cities to a stop but not you. And time larger than Broadway pauses just long enough for me to break all of myself into laughter, all of myself into you. All of the trees, all of its slop, and all of the knowledge that everything that falls into gravity, including love, everything that is inert is molecular movement, including tumor. In vacuum, everything is dust. Everything moving is never still. Every rock is slowly wobbling as particles within it collide. And every river moves faster than every rock. Some particles move slowly, some fast. Everything decaying as it grows. Everything shifting, everything nebulous, in motion. Everything is evolution, waves into light, fire signals, every mind move, neurons constantly, everything still, everything fixed, everything standing, all that's exploding, movements into every second, make time evolve along a continuum toward an uncertain future, one that may be emerging, but is never ever fixed, and then begins again. If I put language into slots of rhythm, can I conjure, can I conjure you back? If I put language into slots of rhythm, can I conjure? Can I conjure?
What if you are responsible to saving more than changing? What if you're the destruction coursing beneath your language of savior? Is that too not fucked up? Claudia Rankin. If I am the destruction coursing beneath my language as savior, if I am the destruction coursing beneath language as savior, if language as savior is destruction, beneath my language of conjuring, beneath this language as resurrecting, beneath this language of mourning, beneath this eco-linguistics of language as the syntax of language, the strata of it, the rhythmic fold of both consciousness and shoreline, migration pattern and the varieties of bark. If this is the destruction of the savior of language. Can we drop down into the syntax, each to each? Can we emerge this syntax into a poesis of reality, of a world that allows all of us to survive without hierarchy and without power? Is that the language of savior? Is that the language of savior? Is that the language of savior? To be responsible to saving more than changing. If it is true, if it is true that the poetry, quote, beneath the poetry of the text, there's the absolute poetry without form and without text. Antoine Artaud. This is why you sought me out to be released from the story. I remember you sitting before me. We stared a long time into each other's eyes and then you said, it's time, and we followed each other under. We relaxed from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, every muscle relaxing, the way that water smooths out a surface, softened my gaze to hold you so you could go even deeper. Usually I observe minute twitches and rapid eye movements, the signs of a waking dream. When the twitching slows down, I say, and now, what's everything else you can think about now? Usually a person breathes a clarifying sigh as if space and time have opened onto infinite potential, a kind of pure energy filled with possibility, perspective, and hope. But with you, something else happened. Your sonoballistic twitches became something else. When you peeled your body behind the flesh, all I remember is that a shape evolved outside of you like an aura, vibrant, reflecting all expressions, no matter how plumed, multicolored, call it a blueprint, coming out into angelic form, some unique configuration of genes and proteins, amino acids and neurotransmitters, a complex process moving into a cosmic origami. I might have thought it was beautiful for a moment, but this blueprint took on a different shape from the organism you 
that made it grow. A shape, in other words, that had no previous mold, a shaken, not all quiet kind of thing. The question is, who and whose design? Or maybe the opposite is the question, whose randomness? Because when it finished evolving, the walls became cellular, particular, infiltrated, meaning at the heart of everything. Once built, it commanded attention. It took over territories, and it uprooted flags. It wanted blood, and with every drop, it evolved. It demanded to be observed and replicated the way of screens. No longer strange. I opened my eyes and found that we were in a post-apocalyptic forest during a time in the not-too-distant future, given how things seem to be going. When I had to think a great deal about bears because in this dead forest they were what is evolving. They were big and tore down my tent to get food. They climbed trees to get the fish I carefully hung for my supper. They tore open screens and ripped into the plastic coolers with fa calm ferocity. They grew to be 20 feet tall and were rarely seen in the winter. When I found you, you were a tiny round thing who I spotted because of your blood that was red in the snow. I was snowshoeing, looking for rabbits for my stew or chinchillas for my coat. You were a fleshen and stood out starkly in color against the field. It was heat rising from you in vapors that made me approach, drawn as I was towards your suffering. I could smell it and knew something dead was lying in that horrific place. And I realized that the dead thing was breathing. Above all else, your eyes obsessed me. They looked at me as if I were a moon, something high in the sky that could reach out even if for solace, like a child praying to a star. I was afraid. I knew if I touched you, I would be violating the new order of cause and effect of loose barbed wire impaled into your tender mouth. You must have accidentally bitten into it when salvaging for pine. The only trees that survived, the rules were clear. After the sapiens had destroyed so many species, we, after the sapiens, we had destroyed so many species, including our own, it was time to allow the ones left behind to wreak havoc on the society, even if that meant the destruction. This was the end of the Anthropocene. I was not to interfere. You and I knew that neither of us would survive if you were to tear me to pieces and leave me there, eclipsed by this whiteness. We knew that this encounter folded edges. We knew that no other beings, heavenly or sentient, would know or miss our having existed in this moment. Neither of us reacted with a primal instinct. Neither of us felt fear. I lift your pierced, and bloody mess of bareness into my arms, and you fell limply into me, I walked. One shoe in front of the other, the top level of ice not able to support the weight of you. I could only walk with great effort, and then only when I thought about how the blood pouring from your wound must surely be making you lighter. Weeks passed. The story went on and on without anyone knowing what was happening. I built you a small dome out of dormant vines. I placed you inside of it. At the top of the dome, I hung a star. I made it from three icicles. I dangled it above your wound, dripping wormwood. You are healing. You are healing. You are healing. You, you, you are healing. You will be restored to the land of the living, and then you will kill me.
this matters in the big picture. I know that in some future place, a bear that should be dead is running wildly through the snow with a star-shaped wound scarred from wormwood, infused icicles drip. I believe this with all my heart, with all my heart, I believe, I believe, I believe we set in motion a rupture in space and time where finally we can swirl into the pines with no, 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 no,
you clearly perceive the five skandhas all are empty and thus pass beyond all suffering. Of interplanetary oh, light, Putra, as if fire neurons ignite, from a synchronistic symphony. That which is appearing, that is indeed emptiness, that which is emptiness, that is indeed appearance, perception, conception, imagination, and consciousness also are like this. O Sariputra, all phenomena are characterized by emptiness. They are not produced. Poem or they beginning neither. with a line. They are not impure neither. By Trungpa are they Rinpoche. Pure. They do not increase scientific You are taught that in order to free your mind of desire that you should reflect on the different parts of your lover's body, thinking of it in terms of flesh, bones, mucus, hairs, internal organs, and so forth. However, although that approach might have worked at one time, in modern times it is problematic. Highly accomplished physicians know the body inside out, nonetheless, they do not stop from falling in love. Working with desire is not all that simple. No activity, likewise, no extinction of activity, no consciousness, then no extinction of consciousness, no name and form. My lover's hair is cropped to the follicle. The follicle is white and slippery. Pores open and close around it even while my lover is sleeping. I am an upside-down container in the hell realm. I cannot rid myself of this desire. Desire, no attachment, no extinction. And so I will think about my lover's no bones. They are chalky, no substance of enamel and marrow, sturdy and connected. No Sinews and muscles no wrap his skeleton in a heap of blood and tendons. My lover's bones Within fall into my body, no arm bone, hip bone, no leg bone, skull. I hold no the skeletal part no of my lover. I splay his no bones in the forest no like a crime scene. I bury no him. Within emptiness, there is no knowledge, likewise, no. I imagine my lover's bones rotten with maggots and slime, but these thoughts of my lover's dead body fill me with sadness. I miss his bones. I want them back. Going beyond all error and all illusion. I am an upside down container in the hell realm. I cannot rid myself of this desire. Independence upon the Prajna Paramita, therefore they attain the highest perfection. And so I will think about my lover's internal organs, beginning with his spleen, the bacteria in his stomach, the bile in his liver. My lover's lungs are meat not fit for desiring, they are tough and spongy. I am an upside down container in the hell realm of samsara. I cannot rid myself of this desire. And so I think about how alive he is with the constant movements of blood and acids, enzymes and neurotransmitters, his digesting, processing, waste eliminating, nutrition absorbing self. Beyond all suffering, all sorry, put your appearance is not different from emptiness. Emptiness is not different from appearance. That Thinking about that my lover as a movement of my mind brings me to my knees with ecstasy. But this is the ecstasy of a knife when not polluted by the poison of aggression. Within emptiness, there is no appearance. No perception, no conception, no imagination, no I think about my lover's heart as it beats no itself eye, bloody. No ear, Veins no pop no and tongue, rest in the no cavity body, no made mind. spacious by no his color, biology. No, smell, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of thought. There is no field of vision, no field of hearing. No my lover's smell, heart is no the vastness of, taste, of space, no touch, the absence no of time. It is empty of itself no as an organ, but it is absolutely full of love. And no extinction of consciousness. I am an upside down container in the hell realm. My lover is contrast, but only in my mind. No attachment, no extinction of attachment, no being, no extinction of being, no birth, no extinction of birth, no old age and death, no extinction of old age and death. 
written in Demos, there is no suffering, no accumulation of suffering, no annihilation of suffering, no path to the annihilation of suffering. Within emptiness, there is no knowledge, likewise no attainment, for there is nothing to be attained. The mind of the Bodhisattva who dwells in dependence upon the person of Aramita without hindrance, because his mind is without hindrances, he is without fear going beyond all error and all illusion, he reaches the final nirvana. All Buddhas of the past, present, and future dwell in dependence upon the Prasna Paramita. Therefore, they attain the highest perfect awakening. Wherefore, know that the Prasna Paramita is the great mantra, the mantra of great wisdom, the supreme mantra, the peerless mantra, capable of removing all pain. It is true. <laughs> Jade. Pretty all those sentences that end in cherry. Dogs curl in puddles. Flowers grow aslant. Peas angle bird song. Yellow yarrow sweet. Ink stain water. Pens pocket charmed. Amulet trance dance. Green magenta contra, diction fatigue candle, removed sink music, shirt tutelage acorn, lesson solstice attention, sorrowful breeze eyes, foot reflex hurts, in trance fixation, dreaming of floating into an object and finding in it the talisman of deepest desires, hibiscus, room pending crested, bark rings hidden in the trunks of trees where branches reach towards the sky. The space between is blue, that's entranced, floating up there, above it all, looking down, no more through, peripheral, I, feeling, breath, only, comes, floating, comes, through, big, toe, tip, catching, visionary, ticks, vibrating, photons, interplanetary, light, firing, neurons, ignite, a, syn, Cratic, sympathetic, 
needs of syncratic symphony. Sa he syncratic symphonies. Ha 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 he ha he. do you remember into the future that you had wanted to make a change now? How do you remember that into the future you had wanted to make a change now? How do you remember that into the future you had wanted to make a change now you? What is it you're remembering? To how do you remember into the future a memory of what is happening now in this moment? Your body here now. Tomorrow. Comfortably listening. Language, does it string together like beads in a necklace? One bead after another, dropping, drop, drop. Drop, drip, 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 language into slots of syntax, language into rhythm, language into conjuring new, conjuring new through syntax disruption, language, language through conjuring new through syntax disruption, language, language through conjuring new through syntax disruption. Language. Comfortably listening. Beyond knowing. What is the knowing here? What is the knowing being passed down here? What is the knowing in this language? In this language knowing, does it string together like beads in a necklace, one bead after another dropping into pattern, into design? What design is that? Slowly consolidating the way you in time and space are now here, healing you, healing others, healing through. Not distorting, not distorting, not distorting. Dandelions to a field grow in flowering bursts. Hovering sunward, what you pay attention to matters. Wavering thoughts and associations matter to the one to whom you are wavering to. are part of the performance view, deep listening of body coming forward now, wondering what all of this is going to add up to and who am I in conjuring up a future? As effortless as some distant past, memory still there, palimpsest, layers, memory can come to you all in a flash, all at once. Like a postcard, image of swimming in a lake while dog waits patiently on the shore, yourself walking, remembering, knowing what the pacing of this language is like, that rhythm moving forward in time, but 
slower than the movie in your mind. Slower still than a story, more like a sound that reveals tones slowly opening within you new areas of association and wonder, wonder, wonder. Who are you now? And it is from who you are now that we close this circle. Closing the circle of you who are here now sitting in your chair, on your couch, on your floor, you there you, breathing you. Into spaces, shadowy periphery, bringing periphery to center vision seeing that all that had been in the background, now the foreground coming into who you are now seeing. Who you are now dreaming, being in time with you. sitting there wondering where the future is and can we change it, stop it, the eco-linguistics of the present is the somatics of the sentence that has yet to be spoken. To the north, to the east, to the south, to the west, to the water, to the fire, to the earth, to the ether. To the language, I, to you, coming into circle, thanking. that the eco-linguistics of the present is the sentence that has yet to be spoken syntax. And from that peripheral space finding yourself knowing that that act of circumnavigating where you are now in that safe space of a place where you love and who you love and who it is that you want to love, being in love with all of the bodies that surround in this moment, being in the periphery of all that coming into who you are now. <laughs> 